Hey everyone, my name is Mason and welcome to FilterGrade. After Effects is an intimidating Adobe Creative Cloud program with an absolute ton of potential in the visual effects, motion graphics, and compositing space. Yes, it can do a lot, but it boils down to some key interfaces, which is what we're going to focus on today. After this, it shouldn't feel so intimidating. This video will give you a great core knowledge of After Effects that will help make sense of the more complex effects the programs can accomplish. This video will also feature some examples to show you these effects in action. Let's start with what After Effects is built for. With some exceptions, you won't be making a full project inside After Effects. It is often used to create a composition that is a larger part of a project that you create in something like Premiere Pro. You may use it to create a special effects scene in a video, but not to edit the entire video. Exceptions might include any projects that are 100% animation. Let's go ahead and get started. Open up After Effects and create a new project. Click Save to give it a name and a save location. Next, you'll import assets from your computer. Go to File, Import, or drag in the files just like in any other Adobe program. These files will go to your project tray. To start creating a composition, click on the New Composition button in the center of the screen or go to Composition, New Composition. Set up things like width and height and frame rate to be whatever you need for your project or you can drag a file into the composition area to create a new composition based on the settings of that file. The time ruler determines how long the composition is. Make sure this doesn't go beyond where you want your composition to take place, or you're going to have a lot of blank space at the end of your final render. This can happen when you start trimming footage out of your project, so be wary of it before your final export. Moving from Premiere Pro to After Effects. Being a video-based Adobe Creative Cloud product, After Effects shares a few things with Adobe Premiere Pro. You have the timeline as in Premiere, but it does function differently. Keyframing is a familiar tool for Premiere Pro users, but it functions within the timeline rather than in an effects panel. Each layer on your timeline can be expanded to reveal its effects properties. Each one has transform properties by default. This also means you can have the effects panel for multiple layers open at the same time. Keyframing works much the same as in Premiere Pro and is an often used skill in After Effects. Start by marking your keyframe on the property you want to change by clicking the stopwatch button and altering the property at various intervals to animate along the timeline. If you don't have this skill yet, try going back to Premiere Pro and animating the scale, position, rotation, and more of your footage within the effects panel. Experiment with layer masks if you're able to as well. You will use these skills all the time in After Effects, but having a base knowledge of them in Premiere Pro might help a lot. The Pen Tool is also used a lot for making things like masks. The Pen Tool is common in Illustrator and Premiere Pro as well, so you may already be familiar with it. If you have some of this prior experience in Adobe software, then you should have a much easier time getting down the basics of After Effects. Motion Tracking Motion tracking is one of the quintessential features of After Effects. This tells After Effects how your footage is moving in 3D space and allows you to use that information to sync up multiple layers into a composition that makes sense. So we're going to start by dragging in our footage, create a new composition from that. Here we have some cruise ship going through the water. We're going to crop that to about 10 seconds. We don't need to go beyond that. And now we're going to create a null object. Do that by right clicking on the timeline, going new, null object. And then let's assume that we're going to also have a text layer here that is going to be animated. So we'll just add that as well. Now you're going to click back onto your main layer, the base video layer, and go over here to tracker. Now we're going to track motion and as you can see, a tracking point came up here. So we're going to track for both position and scale. You can also do rotation, but we're just going to do scale because there's no rotation here. And what we do now is that we assign these points to good high contrast parts of our video. So I'm going to go ahead and use this stack here in the rear because it's high contrast against the background. And then I'm going to also be using one of these windows because it's high contrast against the ship. And these boxes can be adjusted. You can make this larger to get uh, a large wider area, but 
the bigger you make it, the longer the render will take. So let's go ahead and click the play button to analyze. So as we can see, that seemed to track it pretty well. You can see that point stayed pretty secure the whole time and this teal line we see is the path that it followed. So now we can click on edit target and make sure that's set to our null object, which is where the information will be stored. And then we hit apply and say, okay. And now what we have to do is this little swirl tool here is called a pick whip. And we just have to drag that on our text layer to the null object layer. And now if we hit play, we'll see that our text follows the path and scale of the path that we just set based on the motion in the ship video clip. And it's now tied to that information. It's important when picking tracking points that there are points that are high contrast and on screen the entire time. If one of these points had gone off screen during our tracking, then it would lose that information and not be able to figure out where to create the path. Now, this is not always going to work the first time, so don't be afraid to try out different tracking points until you find one that actually sticks for the duration of your clip. In this case, we were able to find some good high contrast points, but that won't be the case in every clip you take. Masking. Next, we're going to talk about masking. This is something you may already be familiar with from Premiere or Photoshop. Masking draws around an area to mask it in or out. That way effects can be applied to a specific area or you can put elements from one layer into another layer. Normally, when you put a layer on top of another, the top layer will completely cover the bottom one. Masking allows you to erase around a subject and insert them into the layer below. One of the most common everyday uses for masking is to get rid of unwanted objects in your scene. To do this, you will need a clean plate, basically a sample of what you want to cover the unwanted objects with. If you are planning this shot, you can take a still frame or a photo of your scene while filming and use that as your clean plate. This should have no actors or objects in it. Alternatively, you can use masking to sample an area of your shot by duplicating the layer and selecting a clean area. Drag in your clean plate over your footage, then reduce the opacity so that you can see the bottom footage and use the pen tool to mask around the rough area you want the objects removed from. When you've made your mask, set the opacity back to normal and you will see that the mask has covered the problem area. By default, masks are set to add, meaning that it only keeps whatever is within the bounds of your mask and removes everything else. You can delve into your layer's properties to see the mask details and change the mask mode, depending on what exactly you're doing. To animate your mask, you can use the timeline to create keyframes. This is useful, for example, if your actor walks in front of the object you're trying to mask out. With the current way the mask is set up, the mask will go over the actor and it won't look good at all. Open up the properties of your mask, select the frame right before the mask covers your actor, and set a keyframe. This will be your starting point. Now start moving frame by frame and adjusting the mask so that it masks what it needs to. Create additional masks as needed, following the same guidelines for animating them. To make the masks look more natural, you may want to slightly increase the feather. This creates a smoother transition between layers and reduces hard edges. If your background is moving rather than stationary, the same rules apply, but it will take a lot longer to manually mask this. You may also want to make use of the motion tracking that we covered earlier to animate your mask along the path of the objects you're looking to alter. The process of manually masking is also referred to as rotoscoping, after the original tool used to do this kind of process by hand in the earlier ages of film. Pre-composing Pre-composing is a simple but useful tool for using projects as templates. If you have a project like a logo animation and want to be able to switch out the logo but keep the animation the same, right-click on the logo and click Pre-compose. Rename it, select to keep all settings in footage, and open up this new composition. Now you will see a box with your current logo in it. You can drag in a new logo, make it fit within the bounds of the box, hide the old logo, then go back to your main composition and see that the logo has been replaced but has all of the same properties as the old one. This is a non-destructive way to use compositions as templates in After Effects. It may end up saving you a lot of time. Exporting. Exporting your project in After Effects is somewhat different than in Premiere Pro. Go to File, Export. You'll see a few options, and none of them just say Export like you may expect from other Adobe products. You can select Add to Render Queue, 
which renders within After Effects, or you can select Add to Adobe Media Encoder queue, which will use Media Encoder, and is recommended. Remember, this will render the area selected with your time ruler. That means it will cut off anything that isn't within those bounds, and will add black space if there is no footage within those bounds. Once Media Encoder is open, click on the format to select what format you want to export as. If you've used Media Encoder with Premiere Pro, you will recognize this interface. Select the format, export settings, and output name. Then click OK and export your file from Media Encoder. That's After Effects in under 20 minutes. There is plenty more to learn, but these core concepts and examples should give you a great starting point. These are the basic aspects of the program and the ones you will utilize, basically no matter what you're trying to accomplish. Make sure to like and subscribe, and let us know in the comments what in-depth After Effects tutorials you want to see in the future. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. And if you're looking for professional LUTs, Lightroom desktop and mobile presets, Premiere Pro templates, and more photo and video education, visit filtergrade.com today.